Guys, I've got to just come out and tell you this. I'm getting a bit worried. I know I've been talking about the battery revolution going on in America, in the United States. It is happening and I thought it was a good thing. And now I've, I've thought through it all. And actually, I'm not so convinced I was right. In fact, if anything, the battery revolution in the United States is giving Tesla a big advantage. It's actually a bit worse than what I realized. Now, when you really start to do the numbers, yeah, Tesla's making their own batteries, but they haven't actually committed to making many of their own batteries. 4680 cells, they're making them themselves, right? They have no middleman involved. So that's an advantage there. Now, yes, Tesla do pay Panasonic for some of their batteries, but that is not a situation where Tesla have a big liability. That's the key word here liability. Now, I've looked at a recent report that's been revealed within the last 48 hours showing all the battery factories that have been committed to in the United States. And I can't help but feel like a lot of them are a huge mistake. And when I say huge, I mean, we're talking about legacy automotive companies who have partnered with primarily key and battery manufacturers to build billion dollar factories, which may be producing products that simply aren't really very good and are very expensive. This is going to be a big problem because these legacy automakers already have billions and billions of dollars of debt, which they will have to write down. I mean, think about it. They're all changing now. They've all admitted to the fact, we've, I've been saying this for two years and you know this, that yes, the future for their companies, all of them except the Japanese ones, is electric. I mean, Mercedes just said, yeah, everything's going to be EV eventually. It's not going to be long. We're hearing this now more and more. That means they'll have billions and billions of dollars of assets that they will have to write off. Now, if they have billions of assets to write off, their lending ratios will eventually increase. It's what's happened to Nissan, right? Nissan's debt is now valued at junk, meaning if they want to go to the bank and get a loan to try and move away from internal combustion and make EVs, that loan costs more money. But the problem is here, if the banks start to say, hang on a minute, you guys just built this battery factory. It cost you X number of billions, 4 billion, 5 billion. You're doing three of them, General Motors, right? You know, we're talking 10, 20 billion per company here. Ford and GM are in particular could be in hot water because the batteries that those factories are producing simply, in my opinion, and if you look at it objectively, don't meet the quality of the new batteries we're seeing from the world's biggest battery company. Now, yes, there is an advantage to make those batteries in the US. You get manufacturing incentives from the US government, but those incentives from the US government, in my view, are not nearly enough not even close to justifying a few things. A few things are very problematic with these batteries. Now, majority of the batteries, in fact, more than 95% of the batteries, factories that have been committed to in the United States, they are uh, lithium ternary batteries, NCA chemistry, NCM chemistry, uh, slight variants to that, but you basically get what I'm saying. They're not lithium ion phosphate. And if you have a look at the warranty claims, you have a look at all the battery replacements, all the ones that you haven't heard about that I've received emails from many of you saying my Kia battery was replaced. I saw, you know, eight to 10 EVs getting their battery replaced at the same dealership. This is all being kept quiet. It's all being kept on the, on the download. I'm getting these kinds of emails now more regularly. I'm starting to get worried because that is the exact battery chemistry that is coming from the exact battery manufacturer with more recall calls and all the other battery companies put together. Even BYD is facing catastrophic problems in China with their ternary batteries, with their NCA and NCM chemistry. And the thing is, yes, okay, higher energy density, that's an advantage. Okay, they perform a little bit better in cold weather, that's an advantage. But those advantages are about to completely evaporate. Therefore, there will be literally no advantage to the battery chemistry that is being made by 95% of the, all these new battery factories popping up in the US will have no advantages, but enormous disadvantages. That my friends is a huge problem. Hello, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans and you're watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to have you. Welcome back everyone else. Now I will be at the electric car show in Melbourne in September. Haven't got any details yet, but I will be speaking there and if you're in Australia and you need somewhere to stay, hit me up. I do have a home there um, at the moment. I'm going to sell that house, by the way, to fund the uh, cancer treatments. But if you need something there, and also I'll be having a meetup at my place. And I'd love everyone who's going to be there to come around. And uh, we'll have a few drinks and just have a hangout. Getting back to this battery issue. Onshoring of battery manufacturing for EVs started as a trickle during the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, now it's a freaking tsunami. And whilst it sounded good, the concern here is 
that with these new announcements from CATL, who dominate the global battery manufacturing market, now that they've basically worked out how to make the ultimate versions of lithium ion phosphate batteries, two different versions, you've got the LMFP or the M3P battery, which isn't really an LFP battery anymore, but it sort of is. It has a higher energy density than current LFP batteries, but it costs exactly the same. That's the big advantage here. You're looking at a cost difference of around 40% lower price at the pack level versus the ternary batteries being made in the US. It could be even 50% cheaper. The other thing they have here is their new purely LFP batteries. These new LFP batteries have some significant advancements, meaning they work better in the cold than NCA or NCM chemistry batteries. Now that was the big advantage that NCA and NCM chemistry batteries had in the past right? They work better in the cold. Well, they don't have that advantage anymore. That's very concerning because CATL, they don't muck around. They put things into production very quickly. They don't say this crap what General Motors and LG Chem say, oh, we can't find enough staff because we don't want to pay them enough. This is not the kind of garbage you hear from these Chinese battery companies. They just get on with shit. They make things happen and they don't say, oh, we're struggling with ramping production. Oh, we can't do this. We can't do that. All of a sudden, you know what happens? They announce a technology and with a matter of months, they're mass producing it. That's what they have to contend with. That is very, very difficult to fight against. Now, US President Joe Biden's Inflation Reduction Act was meant to counter the Chinese. It was signed into law on the 16th of August, 2022. However, it might not have been the initial catalyst behind the onshoring battery factory trend. That said, it did help open the gates and accelerate the pace of factory projects in the US enormously, not to mention sparking a climate tech arms race with Europe and China. One year later, well, what does this all mean? China has controlled the supply and manufacturing of lithium ion batteries now for many years, and they took this much more seriously than the rest of the world, investing billions of dollars before any other country thought it was even realistically viable, or had even considered it. The country's grip on that supply chain began to loosen after automakers, hesitant to repeat the chip shortage crisis that hampered manufacturing during the pandemic, began promising to build EVs and batteries closer to home in 2021. What has followed is a wave of automakers and battery makers, foreign and domestic, pledging to produce North American made batteries before 2030. The IRA requires that 60% of the value of battery components be produced or assembled in, in North America in 2024 to qualify for half of the tax credit for the 7,500. So if you wanna get the full credit, at least 60% of the value of the battery components must be produced in North America or with a free trade partner. That percentage will increase to 100% starting in 2029. To get the remaining half, 50% of the value of critical materials must be sourced from the US or a free trade agreement country in 2024 and 80% from 2027 to 2032. So therefore you would think that all these battery manufacturers in the US that are popping up or all these joint venture partnerships that are producing batteries or plan on doing producing many, many billions of dollars worth of batteries would have an advantage over the Chinese. Well, not so fast. The IRA also includes advanced manufacturing credits that give the producer a payout from the treasury under section 45X. The production of battery cells qualify for a credit of $35 per kilowatt hour of capacity and the production of battery modules qualify for $10 per kilowatt hour. Companies can also be reimbursed 10% of the costs incurred due to the production of electrode active materials like the cathode and the anode. But there's only one company planning to make those that's Tesla at this point anyway. Yes, it is true we've heard about a possible Ford factory in Canada as well, but we're not too sure on the exact details going on there. Automakers and battery manufacturers have collectively invested and promised to invest over 100 billion in building domestic cell and module manufacturing. Together, these companies promise to deliver an annual capacity of well over 1,200 gigawatt hours before 2030. If each factory reaches maximum capacity, that's enough batteries for 18 million electric vehicles. That's based on previous Tesla predictions that say about 100 gigawatt hours capacity can power around 1.5 million EVs, meaning there'll be more batteries than the entire car market of North America actually needs. Car market in North America is around 16 million cars per year. There'll be enough batteries for at least 18 million per year. However, this only includes the battery factories we currently 
have in this list. There are actually more that have been planned. We've also got Ford negotiating with CATL and the US government to build a lithium ion phosphate battery factory licensing CATL technology. Now that would be the best decision Ford has ever made if they can get that to go through. Tesla plans on doing the exact same thing. So we're not including those numbers. There could be enough batteries for more than 22 million cars by 2030 annually. That's a lot of batteries. So you can see here, this is a lot of money being invested, more than $100 billion, right? The problem here is these batteries, all of them, almost all of them. Now there is a couple of lithium ion phosphate battery companies that have popped up in the US producing products that I believe are the batteries that should be being made, but they're not. Unfortunately, companies like GM, Ford, BMW, Mercedes, the majority of the car companies in the US have invested in lithium ternary batteries. Now those batteries will cost more to manufacture than lithium ion phosphate, and they generally have a much shorter life. They also have limitations. If you charge them to 100% and discharge them to zero, you're gonna get a fair bit of battery degradation. There's quite a few drawbacks in my opinion to these kind of batteries. Now, yes, probably most of them will be okay, but based on the history of battery technology, over the last four or five years, we've seen a lot of recalls of this specific battery. Now, the problem here is most of these joint ventures, in fact, more than half of them are with LG Chem and SK Innovation. Now, there's other companies such as the BMW's partner, which is AESC, but the majority of these batteries that will be made are going to be the battery type where we've seen a huge amount of issues, a huge amount of recalls, and quite a few challenges. Now, the other company that I haven't mentioned here is Samsung SDI. They are partnering with Stellantis. Well, you've got the three biggest South Korean battery manufacturers partnering to produce approximately 70% of the future batteries of North America. In other words, North America, if you include Panasonic, who primarily make these types of batteries as well, although they have a much better quality track record, uh, is going to be basically a Korean battery factory. Actually, that's pretty much what it is. If you look at all the battery projects, more than 80% of them are South Korean joint ventures, Samsung SDI, SK Innovations, and LG Chem. Then you have Panasonic. Of course, all these companies don't make LFP batteries. There's only one popping up that we know about that has a joint venture right now with Volkswagen Group. Now, this has been kept secret, fairly hidden. I've reported on this over the past 12 months. No one else seems to have done so. Volkswagen Group owns a controlling stake in SK Innovation, who makes some of the best lithium ion phosphate batteries in the world. And Volkswagen has gone through their own problems with LG Chem batteries or ternary batteries. And I think they probably want to move on from that. Now, the fact that Goshan High Tech are about to build a factory in Michigan for some strange reason has gone ignored even though they're a Chinese company no one has paid any attention Volkswagen of course I'm guessing has a plan to use those batteries that will be made in Michigan I believe Tesla as well they have a huge contract here it's apparently meant to be 70 gigawatt hours of LFP batteries per year that'll be pretty much the only large LFP battery factory being built in North America over the next five to seven years. Now, there are other companies, like I said, but they're small scale projects because they haven't had any big companies collaborate with them to build LFP at scale. So this is a big problem. This is a huge problem. It's going to set the EV adoption rate back. Why do I say that? The more fires we have, even though they're very minimal, the more people, the more the media has ammunition to stop and slow down EVs. That's exactly what's been happening in the last few years. The media jumps on any fires, any problems, any battery recalls and blows them completely out of proportion. Now, standard range Teslas with lithium ion phosphate batteries have received almost no media coverage. You know why? They don't have problems. That's why. Previous generation Teslas, Teslas with NCA chemistry batteries, Panasonic batteries, Samsung, etc. Yeah. They've received a bit of media coverage for fires because they do have them. Now, are they rare? Absolutely. But it's much more rare for batteries with LFP chemistry coming from CHL in Tesla's standard range model and from BYD to have problems. So as CATL continues to ramp up these new LFP and M3P batteries, which have the same energy density as ternary batteries, well... The problem here is that those batteries are so much cheaper and probably likely to last twice as long as most of the batteries that will be made, being made in the United States. Therefore, what does this mean for all these batteries being made in the US? Well, 
Here's what it means. What are they going to be used for? I don't really understand this because sure, there will be more batteries than what we need for all the EVs, right? That's a good thing. You're probably thinking, well, we can use them for energy storage, but why would you want to do that? Honestly, if you're building out energy storage, who in their right mind wants to do that with ternary batteries? Almost no one is doing that these days, right? So we're going to have at least enough batteries for 22 million cars by 2030, right? The market is nowhere near that big and never will be in the North America. Where are those batteries going to go exactly? If they're not needed for energy storage, which they won't be. Think about it. Tesla's energy storage packs, they're very popular. They don't use ternary batteries. They use LFP because those batteries last about twice as long and they're much cheaper. Right. So even if Tesla can get some sort of incentives from the US government, it doesn't justify the fact the market doesn't want ternary batteries for energy storage. Everyone knows the advantages of LFP for energy storage. Therefore, there is enormous oversupply. The oversupply will be astronomical by 2030. What exactly will they do with all these batteries using what I believe is not really next level advanced battery chemistry? I mean, how many times have you heard these kinds of ridiculous numbers? from these battery manufacturers. Oh, we're gonna, we've, we've figured out how to use silicon, uh, little bits of silicon in our anodes. And by the time we get to 2025, we'll have, we will have increased energy density by 5%, by 2030, by 10%. That is terrible in comparison to their competition. Their competition, my friends, is China. And they are innovating quicker. They are building better products faster. And I don't see how these massive, over $100 billion of investments in North American battery supply is going to pay off because it simply isn't the right battery chemistry. What will happen with this enormous glut of batteries that frankly aren't as good as much cheaper batteries that are already being made today by the world's biggest battery company? Well, I don't know how this is going to play out, but these are my thoughts here. I hope you got some value from this. Let me know what you think in the comments and thank you for watching.